Welcome back. OK, so now we're going to move on to look at exponential smoothing procedures. But before we do that, to follow along with this notebook, you'll need Stats Models version 0.11 installed. Ideally, the same version of me, which is 0.11.1. If you've got a version of Stats Models prior to that installed, so run these two first two cells and that will tell you what version you've got installed. If your version is prior to, to 0.11, then you won't be able to run the exponential smoothing within this notebook. So make sure you've got the right version installed. So let's think back to the baseline forecast methods that we used. So the first of those was Naive Forecast 1. Now what Naive Forecast 1 is doing is it's taking the most recent observation and extrapolating into the future. So it gives all of the weight of the forecast to the most recent value and no weight to anything before that. In the average method, it's much more democratic. So we take all of our observations over time and we weight them all equally. They're all equally important. And then we extrapolate that value into the future. Now it turns out it's quite sensible to sit somewhere between those two extremes. And that's where exponential smoothing comes in. So an exponential smoothing forecast is a weighted average of past observations. And intuitively, what it does is it gives more weight to more recent observations. And, and that makes sense because you think that your, your forecast will be more accurate if you're taking more recent in, information into account, giving it more weight than older information. So mathematically, what is happening is that the weights that you give to data are decreasing over time. In fact, they decrease exponentially over time as those observations get older. So exponential smoothing models are used worldwide. They're very popular um, because of how straightforward they are. Um, and there's been a lot of research in this area. And so there's multiple types of exponential smoothing that you can use. And sometimes different types are appropriate depending on the type of data you've got. So uh, three types in particular are what's called simple exponential smoothing, um, which we'll look at first. And that is in situations where it's not clear if there's trend or seasonality within your data. The second is Holt's linear method. Um, so Holt was an individual who did a lot of research um, in the early days of exponential smoothing. And what that does is it extends simple exponential smoothing to include a trend component, a linear trend, I should say. And then you've got Holt's winters exponential smoothing. So Holt and winters came up with um, a more sophisticated version of exponential smoothing, which can handle both trend and seasonality within your data. And the neat thing about uh, Holt's linear method and Holt's winter's exponential smoothing is that they can also include a damped trend. And that's quite a, uh, a neat thing to do when you're forecasting further and further into the future. So rather than assuming that things will always go linearly, um, you can include a damped trend to sort of, sort of um, attenuate that signal over time. And we'll see how that works. So let's start with simple exponential smoothing. Um, so we've got the definition mathematically here of simple exponential smoothing um, with two equations. Equation 1.1 is the forecast, forecast equation and uh, equation 1.2 is the level equation. So you can see that the forecast equation just equals the current level. So it's a flat forecast function, no different from um, your naive forecast and the level um, is a bit more of a complicated equation. So we've got yt. So yt is the real world observation at time t. It's the ground truth. It's something you've observed. Um, and you've got uh, the level. So the level is the current level of the exponential smoothing um, output. And then you've got alpha. And alpha is the smoothing parameter. That's a hyperparameter 
which you can tune to make your exponential smoothing model behave in different ways. The good news is that there are optimi optimization procedures out there that are built into stats models that will do that for you, although you can still play with it if you wish. So if you've not done mathematics in a while, that might look quite a complicated equation, um, but, it, but it isn't complicated. And I'm going to show you how it works with some simple functions to start off with. Um, so all this is doing, sorry, in words, is it is weighting um, the, the previous observation by alpha and then all previous other observations by um, one minus alpha. And so this gives us this exponentially decreasing weight over time. So here's an example. Um, so in this example, our ground truth y value is 150. Our previous level of the exponential smoothing equation is 120. Our alpha value is 0 0.2. And this is the equation to calculate the current level. So that's what I've implemented here in this function called smooth level. So we're going to pass in the current observation, we're going to pass in the current level, and we're going to pass in our alpha value. Um, and then this uh, calculates this this equation here for us and then returns that value. So we're going to pass in what we've been told to pass in. Current observation is 150, the last level is 120, and the alpha is 0 0.2. So our smoothed value is 126. So it's somewhere between the previous value, the previous level, and the current value. Um, so here's a second example. So in this example, instead of 0 0.2, we're going to have a smoothing parameter of 0 0.8. So what that's done is it, it's, it's, there's been a harsher jump. So we've instead of, instead of being, uh, so 0 0.2 seemed to smooth the value a lot more. Um, so we stayed closer to that original level of 120. But now that we've gone up to 0 0.8, we've jumped a lot higher. We've jumped nearer that current observation. So in fact, if we set this to 1 and run it, we can see we've jumped all the way. And actually, it would be the same as the naive forecast. We would run a flat forecast at 150 forward. And if we set that to 0 and rerun, we would stay at the current level. There would be no correction of the current level of, of the forecast. So that's what the alpha value is doing. It varies between 0 and 1. And the closer we set that to 0, um, the less harsh the jump in the value. The closer it is to 1, the bigger the jump you'll see in the level. And when it's actually 1, it will be equivalent to a naive forecast. So as I said before, equation 1.1 is called the forecast equation. Um, so all that means is if you're forecasting h steps ahead, that is equivalent to the current level of your exponential smoothing equation. It's again a flat forecast. So we'll see what that looks like shortly. Um, so to just give you an example, we're going to add an, an additional function here called flat forecast. That's going to return a numpy array. And all that's going to do is fill in um, the current level. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a vector of length horizon, and it's going to be it's all the values are going to be the same, and they're going to be of the value level. So what we're going to do is we've got an example where the current observation is 150, the last level is 120, our alpha is quite low, it's 0 0.2, and we're going to forecast six periods ahead. So we're going to call that smooth level function and return the new level. And then we're going to pass that new level to our flat forecast function with the horizon. And that will return our forecast. So there we go. So we, we know that the new level um, is 126 and our flat forecast just returns a NumPy array. And that's what simple exponential smoothing is doing underneath. So it's a very straightforward procedure. So you don't need to write those functions yourself. That's available within stats models. Um, 
So we've used stats models before, but formally it's, it's a Python module that provides all the statistical models within, within Python, um, as well as classical statistical tests and data exploration. So there's two ways you can use simple exponential smoothing in stats models. So historically, there's been a class called simple EXP smoothing, and that's within the TSA time series analysis dot Holtz Winters module. Um, so that implements it very much how I've I've shown you um, above, um, and it provides um, fast optimization to automatically select the best alpha value for your data. But from verge stats model version zero point one one. Um, they've introduced the state space uh, dot exponential smoothing module. Um, so there's a general exponential smoothing class. So the version of exponential smoothing I've just shown you is an equation based method. Um, so it's not a statistical model. Um, once we add in um, the idea of a statistical model, we can have prediction intervals. And that's what a state space model is. It's kind of the statistical equivalent of those mathematical equations that I've shown you there. Now, the scope of what's going on is far beyond this tutorial. Um, but the thing you need to take away is it, it works fundamentally the same for the point forecast, but it produces this prediction interval around it because it's a statistical model. And we always want, we always want prediction intervals with our forecasts where possible. If you want to learn more about state space, then I recommend looking at um, a free online book by um, Rob Hindman and colleagues. Um, and that's that's available through this link here. And there's a chapter on state space models. So we're going to look at simple exponential smoothing in action. Now we're going to look at it with data about the River Nile, which which is its flow rate between 1871 and 1930. So this is annual data. So that's contained within the data um, folder called nile.csv. Its index column is the year, and it's got uh, annual start frequency. So we'll read that in. Let's have a look at what it looks like. So here it is. So there's possibly some trend within this data, although that is unclear. So first of all, we're going to look at this with simple exponential smoothing. So we're going to we're going to read in our exponential smoothing class. We're going to import that from statsmodels.tsa.statespace.exponential smoothing. And then this is all the code you need to get a forecast out of it. It's really very straightforward. So first of all, we're going to forecast 10 years ahead. We're going to create a model. So we do that by creating an instance of the exponential smoothing class. We're going to pass in our training data or endogenous data in state space terms. Um, so that goes into the constructor method for this class. Um, so we just pass in the Nile data frame and the flow column from that. And then we call model.fit um, and that returns a state space exponential smoothing results object. So that results object also has some methods. So one of those methods is called get forecast. So we pass in uh, the number of steps we want to take into the future, which is 10, and return um, a, a prediction results. So within that, there's something called a summary frame, which is a data frame that contains the point predictions and the prediction intervals. And to change the prediction intervals, you have this value called alpha, not to be confused with our exponential smoothing parameter alpha. This is the alpha for your prediction interval and how it controls how wide your interval would be. So this gives us 80% prediction intervals. So let's run that and we'll look at the first three values within that data frame. That's what this dot head does here. So the final forecast was in 19, sorry, the final um, ground truth observed value was in 1930. So here's three years into the future, 1931, 32 and 33. This gives us our 
mean forecast, our point forecast. So this is a flat forecast function, remember, so it's all the same value. And here we've got our um, prediction interval. Now, unfortunately, they call it a confidence interval, but it's actually a prediction interval. Now, let's have a look at that visually. That's all this code is doing here. Um, we're getting the summary frame again for 80% um, prediction intervals and 90% prediction intervals, and we're plotting those using matplotlib. So here we can see in blue our original data, um, and it does look like the trend in there was a there was a decrease in trend around um, 1900, but then there's a fairly flat trend from from then on. Uh, so the, the sorry the uh, the green dotted line is your fitted exponential smoothing model. So that's being corrected as more data is fed into the model. Then the red line is our flat forecast. Um, the orange uh, um, shaded area is our 80% predicted interval and our blue shaded area, area is our 90% prediction interval. So we've got a reasonable forecast for the level I would say um, and then um, because there's there's quite a bit of uncertainty earlier in the data you've got a fairly wide prediction interval there. So let's have a look what's actually been fitted underneath. So as I said this is a statistical model um, it's actually what's called an ETS model, an error trend seasonality model. Um, and then in these brackets, what it's telling us is we've got additive errors and we've got no trend and we've got no seasonality. So that's equivalent to a simple exponential smoothing model. Um, we can see the smoothing level that's been fitted of 0.28, um, as well as a confidence interval for that, that enables us to get our prediction intervals. And we can see our initial level, which is 3,533, which is up, which is up here. So that's what's underneath the the, the results here, uh, a statistical model um, that represents simple exponential smoothing and gives us those prediction intervals. So next, we'll go on to look at Holt's linear trend method.